Hello and welcome to Dancing Dialogue today with the new archetypes, emerging archetypes. And today I have with me beautiful Bruno. Uh, welcome Bruno, it's a delight to talk to you each time we come together, each time I feel your spark, your love for earth, for being in harmony with the processes that are actually here, but that we often fail to see. So today I would like to introduce to our people who are out there, but also to bring this energy out into the field, because we're working obviously also in the energy um, realm. I would like you to tell us just a little bit about yourself. What brought you into this I would say fascinating and, and magical connection with earth, with the processes that take us from nothing to abundance. Could you just give us a little idea what brought you here? So I served for 20 years in the military service in Canada, uh, which brought me to uh, participate in two, two wars. Um, I believe going to where you have to learn to live with your heart shut and that caused me over time to be both physically and mentally injured, which uh, forced me to uh, find my way out of the system because I could no longer serve under those circumstances being so injured. So that led me on a path of having to find a way to recover and heal as best as I could. Because really, the options are very, very simple. Either you live or you die. So either you're on a path of healing or on a path of dying. I've seen enough of my uh, comrades going uh, on both paths, um, but not many have succeeded to go in full recovery after uh, going to war and, and be damaged by it. So... We have been exposed to many uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs. Um, it caused a lot of damage that needed to be repaired. And that inspired me to go back to the source uh, as much as I could on earth to find solutions. The doctors were not helping me enough to what I needed to recover. And the, pharma the, the pharmaceutical industry was definitely not helping with their produ the, the product they had to offer for what I needed to tackle. And in some cases was the reason why I was in such bad shape. So I had to find another way. And the other way was not quite obvious because where do you go from there? You know, you, you go, if you don't find what you're looking for at the local uh, grocery store, you go to the pharmacy and from there, and it's pretty much it in the modern world in North America. Very few people that I know uh, are very talented in finding the right plants outdoor to, to actually produce very, very solid results in terms of healing various amount of illness. And when it comes to psychological trauma, it, even less people seem to uh, be qualified in, in, in being competent at fixing people up correctly. At least that was my experience at the time and my limited views on the world based on my uh, reality and so I went I turned to nature and I went to live from the city and sold my house uh, moved with my family to the country to try to get a, a second chance at healing I knew intuitively that if I would be in a calmer environment where people there are fewer people so less people can represent a potential threat uh, so I could be more relaxed and if I can be more relaxed, I might stand a chance to heal a little bit better. So from there, I've learned um, what medicine stopped taking from the, the common medical world and then gradually turned to nature and start eating better. Uh, became an expert at, at growing my own cannabis for medical purposes and, and knowing all the ins and outs I needed to know in order to use that plant effectively to balance my system out and balance my mind out so I can actually be able to be having a bit of a quality of life for change and, and be able to be rational again and be able to be present for my family because when you're too absorbed in your problems, you're not there. 
No. But if you can be calm enough and appreciate your son kicking the ball with you, you know, that was more valuable to me than, than spending time in, in anger and, and resentment towards what I felt was injury and trauma. And so the plant taught me a lot of things, the plants in general, actually, I would turn to various plants for various purposes. Uh, I tell people when it comes down to it, you know, you can call it potato medicine mm -hmm. and here's why. Mm -hmm. Let's put your, anybody in this, uh, this scenario. Tomorrow you're starved to death and you got nothing else but a potato in front of you. Here's the thing. If you don't eat that potato, you're going to die. At that moment, that potato is both your medicine and your food, right? So it, it is medicine in some instances. Yes. And yet, the same potato can actually kill because yes. it has poisonous substances. If you don't cook it right, it can actually hurt you. Yeah. Nature is full of paradox and complexities like that. You can't think linear. No. It's not, oh, this compound leads to that and that's it. Oh, uh oh way more complex than that and so i had to learn to dance with it yeah. stop thinking how can i do all my extracts to obtain the most potent drug possible and learn to go more holistically uh -huh. if my plant grows in a different environment with less stress and better care and less chemicals on the ground and nature does its magic to it will i not get a more healing plant then if I try to grow it with multiple fertilizer that are engineered in a lab. Mm -hmm. And I discovered for myself that my truth was I would obtain better result with the organic one. Mm -hmm. Some people will swear by the other type and I'm fine by me, whatever fits their need. Yeah. But for what I have done for myself, that it led me to become more holistic in my approach. Beautiful. I pushed the envelope further. There are bugs attacking my plants. <laughs> well, that at first, I didn't have the luxury to lose a plant. Now I have the luxury to lose a plant. If I, if it's, if it has to come down to it, I'm, I'm not hard pressed. I know where to turn to get okay with anything I need in nature. So I don't have to feel and stress of lack anymore. You're not I'm fighting people, anymore. Was that? You are not fighting anymore. No, exactly. I'm not fighting for survival to have what I need to recover. So I have a lot more time to assess how to be more in harmony with this growing process. So I've learned to stop cutting my plants senselessly when it was not necessary, when just simple bending process could do a better job. Um, I've learned to plant not straight, uh, not vertically. I, I, I plant my plant at an angle. Why? Because things that are put in a bow formation, in a bow shape, they will always bend in the wind. They don't break, they don't snap. Yeah. If yeah. you look at that, a bow doesn't snap in the wind ever. Yeah. But a straight post will. Beautiful, yeah, it's so true. And that brings us back to the bamboo that we were talking about a while ago. As yes. you're flowing with the wind, with the circumstances of life, without giving up yourself, without staying in your truth, staying in your truth, everything is unfolding. So. Thank you for sharing your life You're as welcome. it brought you here. And I know that many of us have gone through difficulties. Not all of us have been in the army. Not all of us have disconnected from our heart. I will, let me call it this way. And had to go through severe experiences and illnesses and injuries the way you have. And yet I know that the whole world, each individual, has been injured physically, mentally, emotionally by the world that we have been living in, by the ways that we used to think. And that's why you and I are so fascinated about nature. Now, I have not, no idea about farming. I love the earth. I'm totally connected. I live in harmony but I can't plant, but I, I guess I'm going to learn this too. And so it's so beautiful how nature actually healed you. The cannabis, the, the way you started to stop fighting and resisting 
and allowed yourself to be in the harmony of the process of nature that is really far away from the logic that we grew up in. And yet I want to say that, that Bruno was a magical person all his life. He awoke when he was a young child and yet life took him in another direction so that you could come back and share with the world. And this is what Bruno is doing now. He's actually sharing with people how to come into that harmony with nature and to grow. What fascinates me a lot about you, and maybe you can just talk to this as well, is how you turn a horrible earth, a gravel, into an ecosystem, an abundance. How, how is that whole process of regenerative actually functioning? Everybody talks about regenerative. And while we know that we could have attacks from pests and whatever, but it's not the end of nature. Nature always comes back. Yes. And I would love you to share with us, how does nature come back? The gravel is also a state of war. It's nothing left. Mm. How did you bring it back to life, Bruno? I, I've used a, a very simple um, approach. Stop raking. <laughs> right? There's nothing to rake, first of all. So why, why would I rake gravel? Uh, I, I applied a few grass seeds because I had nothing. I went to get uh, my mulching machine and I spreaded some wood mulch. Why? Because that gives a good buffer for the moist content to stay underground and not evaporate to the surface too quickly. It keeps it level at a very specific percentage. And it is good absorbent when it rains. Then I went approach of um, a friend farmer uh, in the area and asked for all hay, rotting hay if possible. But in this case, I had not in rotting hay, but still past the point of being uh, consumed by the animals. But they were those hay bales, those few hay bales I've, uh, I've used to spray on the yard to create another layer of organic matter was filled with seeds of all kinds, different types of grass, different types of what people call weed. Um, okay, sure, weed, whatever. Uh, for one person, it is weed. For me, it's either medicine or food. And very, very seldomly uh, doesn't have a, a useful purpose for my needs. I found that even the plants I can't really use to eat or for medicine, I can use them for other purposes, like making dirt. You cut them down, you don't pull their roots off because you want to keep the organic uh, little uh, organism in the soil, having their little home intact. You don't want to create a tsunami every time you come by. Yes. But you can cut what's above and leave it on the ground and it creates organic matter. It creates another buffer to protect from uh, severe erosion or from the rain. And it also brings nutrients to the surface. Yeah. So even when we think they're useless, but they're doing a function in nature because otherwise than that, they wouldn't be there. Nature only supports what it needs to keep things in balance. So what am I to do to do a fight with chemical warfare to all those plants when I need the plants to be as natural as possible so I can heal as fast as possible? Because the plants I grew in my garden were feeding me back in my kitchen. So I was very cognizant dealing with previous um, illness from consuming pharmaceutical drugs in some cases like it, it turned my stomach completely upside down and yeah I had that acid, re acid reflux at one point you know they have a lot of side effects to avoid those problems I had to go and revert to a food that was cleaner and more sustaining well I found out quickly that if you make your own soil and you don't use pesticide or any chemicals your food is so rich with nutrients that you eat less and you feel fulfilled longer. You get less sick because you're exposed to more bacteria correctly. The nutrient packed food fulfill your needs of your body to, uh, in terms of repair and auto regeneration. So it, it was just a, a magical little cycle. If you do things right, right from the get go, everything falls in place by itself. Yes. It gets to get, is, yeah. yeah, this is the magic as you're just describing when we're allowing nature and we're flowing with it. 
and we're starting to actually eat from it and use its medicine, it really changes our life because it we're does. starting to become, for me, health is the absence of sickness. I love that word vitality. And for me, you are a vitality shaman, a vitality advocate, as you are actually promoting and sharing with people how vitality is taking place in nature. Yes. Whether it's in a pot in your home with some kind of plant that you can eat or whether it's in your front yard or whether you have a little plantation where you cross what you call that when you have different plants together. You hybridize. Oh, you do the uh, companion planting. The companion planting and all of that. You are actually in that process of regeneration. And for me, this also has another very important part because Bruno and I are also into the light work. We are also into the ascension, the awakening. And I feel we are often scared by death as the end. When really, this death is just the beginning of something new. Yes. And you have shared this so beautifully. Even if you cut the grass and leave it there, you are giving the earth now the opportunity to regenerate and create something beautiful and new. Yes. And the same happens in our body when we do that. And that is really amazing. Now, I would like to add, I've pushed the envelope a bit further because the first year I applied grass seeds some wood mulch, uh, there was some leafy material from the trees as well. I have applied hay bales and I let nature start taking off. I followed a simple rule of a, a certain type of grass cycles being 60 days. I followed that basic rule, 60 days, two months, right? Leave your grass alone for two months before you cut the first time. And I did that and it brought more organic matter to the surface. As a result, more plant seeds were disseminated around and it filled up the holes pretty quickly. When a weed is done working, bringing the nutrient to the surface in one area, it migrates on its own. So you don't even need to wage war on it. The following year, I introduced uh, livestock. I introduced chicken to do it holistically so it, they don't destroy what I was trying to build. I had to make them graze there very short periods of time and move them very quickly to the next patch over. So I had a fence that I would install and I would section my yard in little sectors. And for a few days, they'd be in one sector. The next few days, they'd be in another sector and so on and so forth and never come back to the same sector twice in 60 days. And if I did it that way, every time they came back, there was more food for them. More plants were growing, richer with more attached to their foliage. So the grass would grow thicker. They would have more food every patch they grow. Yeah, they like grow for, for 60 days. When the chicken comes back, there's more food. So now it costs me less to feed my chicken. It's amazing. It's it a win, win, win. And I got more nutrient packed eggs than before as a result, every time. Yes. It's wonderful. Everything rebalances itself out. But now, nature doesn't do things in singularity ever. No. And never anything in nature is perfectly linear. So I apply those basic principles again basic, basic, basic principles. How many different types of animals do we have in nature? We have animals in the water. We have animals that can fly and we have animals that can roam the land. Well, there must be a reason for that and there must be a use for that. So instead of pulling out the gun every time I see something that moves that does not resemble a human, maybe I should study what it does and what it truly does and how it truly does it. Not based on what I've read when I was a kid, but yeah. based on my own physical observations. Yes. So I... I feel is just another topic because we want to give our audience some. Yes. 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 I really feel you have given us such a beautiful insight. What brings us to really do what's our passion. And not only that, but be part of this new world that is emerging. By being part of nature and allowing ourselves to step out of the linear out of the matrix and into the harmony and the wonder of nature. 
and how we can actually turn something that seems dead and destructed into something that grows and is beautiful and filled with nutrients. So I hope today people got something. We are very open to answer the questions, of course, more you than me. And I'm really looking forward to have our next dancing dialogue on how these beautiful animals that have not been created by accident, the flying and the crawling, the ones in the water, all these animals, how they are part of this beautiful harmony in nature and how they work with you in your beautiful way of, I don't want to call it agriculture, it's not agriculture, you, it, but some people call that permaculture. But I even want to take it a step further into the regenerative and reconnection to earth. How's that? Regenerative agriculture uh, is, try, is inspired by permaculture. Permaculture englobes all that because it's the holistic approach to nature exactly. re based on your environment that you live in. Yeah. Whether it's an apartment building or whether it's out in a field with hundreds of acres. Exactly. Different realities, different approaches. Exactly. But it works everywhere because nature doesn't stop to be the magic that it is. Whether same it's planet, same, same principles apply everywhere. Exactly. So we are so happy. I am so happy that we could make this first one. I'm really looking forward to the next one, Bruno, because it's going to be equally exciting. And we're really hoping people get engaged, people talk to us, and we can regenerate our beautiful planet together. Rapidly and with fun. Exactly. So thank you so much for today, Bruno. We'll catch you soon.